What a cold winter it has been. Have you been thinking about all of those starving squirrels out there? What do you have to feed them? The votes have been tallied. The die has been cast. And now John, not content to sit and follow orders, is on the hunt for Mr. O. Whichever path starts now. You know what? No. This is fucking stupid. I fumbled with the kitchen doorknob and opened the door to the dark hallway. Only the moonlight creeping through the window was lighting my way. In the colorless shadows, nothing was stirring. John, where are you going? He's the one who did this. He's messing with us. Angela, out to Guy. Drew, stay in here, watch the hall door, and nous siferons cinq fois avant de venir. All right. Greg, take the back door and circle to the front. Joe, should we really split? Just do it. John, you don't know this house or what comes next. You wait for me. Given you have an out and proud predator in your house, probably not a good idea for you to take point. Fine. You first then, cowboy. I turned around to give her a reassuring nod, but I could only make out her silhouette. And I didn't have to see her face to feel my newfound balls contract a little. I slipped into the hallway, the floor creaking under my heels no matter how slowly I walked. When my shoe found the runner, I was relieved that the padding took more of the sound away. The darkness of the second floor yawned out above my head, and my resolve wavered until I felt Joanna's hand push me forward. I hadn't even heard her come into the hall behind me. Five feet from the front door, I could see light coming in through the cracks around the frame. The door was slightly open. To the left of the front door was their living room, and I imagined Mr. O leaping out of that darkness wielding a razor. But when he didn't, I opened the front door and took a step out onto the porch. The fast shuffle of gravel caused me to jump, and from out of the shadows lumbered the big gray bastard, his long twisting horns stretching up and out from his head, looking like arms outstretched in a challenge. Under the moonlight, he snorted and steam came up from his dark nostrils. He paused for a moment and then veered to his right, toward the pasture that led to the barn. Great. Well, you were right about him being outside. I think he's going after his exacto knife. He was obsessed with it earlier. We heard somebody creeping around the house, coming closer. Joanna whistled, and the person whistled back in answer. Hey, Joe. Il laisse sortir le chèvre. À la grange. Prior to tonight, I hadn't heard them speak anything other than English around me. I could hear the bleeding of the other goats, scattered all over the field and maybe even behind the house. Mr. O was trying to sow as much chaos as he could. If we didn't catch him fast, this was only going to get worse. I jumped off the porch and walked deliberately across the drive over to the field. I threw a leg over the fence and looked back. Joanna and Greg were nowhere to be seen. They hadn't followed me. Maybe I had screwed up, but it was too late now. It was time to find the creep before he had any chance to cause us harm. If half of what he confessed was true, he could be capable of almost anything. And people like that, they shouldn't be allowed to get away. I walked into the long grass and made my way towards the circle of trees. I was about five feet away from the first one when I saw a large lump lying in the field. Shit! It was another goat from the enclosure, a brown and white one. Its throat had been cut. The wound was glistening in the moonlight, just like the platter had only a little while before. There was no way that Mr. O had already made it to the barn and back, which meant only one thing. He had more than one knife. I could make out the other goats in the field, walking free just outside the orchard's cover. 
What the fuck was he up to? I had only heard a single footstep behind me in the grass, and I turned just in time to feel a solid hit to my side. I threw a right hook back and I caught him in the face. Mr. O went down to the ground. He was dressed head to toe in Hunter's coveralls, complete with gloves. What was odd was that he was wearing a medical exam glove on one hand, while the other looked dark and shiny, wrapped around the hilt of one of those boot knives you see in the old war movies. And then my side suddenly felt wet. You... <coughs> Wait, really? Oh, John. Well, shit, I... Uh... I didn't mean to get you. I mean, I'm pretty sure I didn't hit anything major. You'll, you'll be fine. He dropped the knife and he placed his hands up. I mean, they're out here with guns and it's pretty much all I got. Can't blame me for being a little jumpy, right? My foot found his groin with a satisfying thud. <laughs> the report of the rifle came out of nowhere and echoed off the barn. Do not move. Either of you. Joanna made her way down the hill. She didn't appear to be armed. I put my hand into my borrowed coat and lightly probed my side. It hurt, but it was shallow. His knife had hit my lower rib. There's a dead goat in my field, and you've attacked one of us. I don't know what you think you're going to get out of this, but this isn't what you paid for. I didn't kill your stupid goat. John, go over to the barn. Greg's going to start up the generator. We'll get you patched up. Yes, ma'am. John? I really regret what happened. But, you know. Mistakes. I limped my way toward the barn. My side was on fire at this point. But the blood was seeping rather than gushing. I was going to live, and now that Joanna made me walk away, so would Mr. O. The roar of the generator as it came to life startled me. Flood lamps under the eaves of the roof came on and lit up the field. I looked at the coat, my blood staining the jacket, my hands. I turned to look back at Joanna, who was reading the riot act to Mr. O. He was still seated on the ground. He looked pathetic and compliant, staring at his feet. I wasn't the only one watching them. Less than a yard away, there was a squirrel standing on its haunches, sniffing at the air. Oh, hey, Ethan. I thought I was being clever when I said it, but then the thing turned and looked at me. It shook its tail back and forth impatiently, and then it went back to sniffing the air in Mr. O's direction. Greg came over to meet me. The squirrel ran off into the brush. Oh, shit. Are you okay? He stabbed me, but it didn't hit anything. But he ruined that coat he let me borrow. Let's get you inside, bud. We gotta dress that cut. Taking off my coat and shirt was difficult, but Greg helped me as gently as he could. The rubbing alcohol stung and I hissed through the pain. Well, not how I expected the night to go. Do the clients normally leave here quietly? No, I mean, I, I, I didn't expect to be patching you up. I'll take it up with him. He stabbed me. Yeah, but if you'd listened for a second, maybe he wouldn't have gotten the chance. You're defending that prick? After that freak out in the kitchen, I thought you'd be on my side. <laughs> what you guys did with the squirrels. Is that all bullshit? Because that asshole doesn't seem any better. Well, they don't get better. But it's not bullshit. Right. I'm cleaning up your cut, right? I can clean out the dirt and whatever else, but you're the one who has to keep it clean. It doesn't stop you from getting cut again. I'm not following. All right. So dad only used to do deathbed work. It's the end of life. The person confesses, he makes the meal, and they usually die. And just like that, no damnation. You mean like last rites? Yeah. But for the kind of people who think that going to church is just inviting a lightning bolt. It's basically their get out of hell free card. Except, it's not free. Greg finished patching me up, and I buttoned my shirt over my new bandage. My whole side throbbing. And then I put the borrowed coat back on, too. I looked for something for me to use as a weapon. Greg offered me a gun. Nah, I can't. Never learn to shoot. Oh, that'd be a bad idea, then. <laughs> Likely to hurt the wrong people. 
Mr. O really said Guy's address? Oh yeah. Actually, speaking of which, Greg pulled out his phone. Started dialing. Guy, you there? Ça va? Whatever Guy was telling him, he obviously didn't like it. Guy, ça pas de l'air, you idiot. We could have just shot him. He hung up, and then he pressed his phone to the bridge of his nose. <sighs> okay, John, you're going to have to tell me. You think you can lift a 30-pound bag of salt? Why? Greg motioned over to a sack in the corner. I'm going to run out there and get Joanna. You're going to have to take that salt and make a thick, thick line at the door, okay? When we're close, you're going to have to kick that line apart, and then you're going to let us in, and then you're going to push the door closed. There came a scream from outside. Don't worry about that. We just got to get Joanna inside the barn, okay? I hefted the bag, and I wished I hadn't. The stitches on my side sent blinding hot pain through my nervous system, but I powered through. I made my way toward the door. Greg was already running outside. John, I got inside! He found one to Robert! I poured down the line like I was told, stopping only for a second when I heard that scream again. No way that was a goat. Joanna just started running towards the barn. Mr. O looked confused, shook his head in disbelief, and just started walking after her. And then that scream came again, and Mr. O looked behind him, and then he started running too. Greg was out there waving his pistol. He yelled for everyone else to stay indoors, wherever they were. Joanna was about five yards from the door, and Mr. O picked up speed and slammed into her, causing her to eat dirt while he was able to keep his feet. From the darkness, the big gray bastard came charging directly after Mr. O and letting out another one of those weird, human-like screams. Joanna got back to her feet and raced toward the barn. Greg kept his position and kept his gun trained on Mr. O and the goat as they veered left and back into the darkness. Joanna made it to the door and I kicked through my salt line, Greg following her. I was about to pull the door shut when we heard, Wait! No! You can't! This is murder! Hold the door! I felt my stitches pop and I fell, losing my grip, the door just nine inches shy of being closed completely. Mr. O's hand shot through the opening, and then he gripped on the door trying to push it open. I pulled myself back up with the door handle and stood in the way of the crack, making eye contact with Mr. O. John, you gotta let me in. Your choices this week are to show mercy. Show him the door. Or have a little fun with it. You might have noticed that we've added some music. This has been composed by a friend of the podcast known only as Ryder. Don't forget to share our podcast on social media. Go to our website, whicheverpath.com, to see updates. Maybe buy some of our merchandise. And if you're listening to us on any of the podcasting networks, remember, your reviews are what will help bring this and other stories to the unsuspecting, so they too can join you on whichever path you choose.